You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Brandon Seho, formerly of WBRZ, now WLWT Television there in Cincinnati. Good enough to join us for a couple of minutes. Hey, man, happy new year. Thanks for the time. How are you? I'm good, Matt. I feel like we do this uh, about every two or three months. We figure out a way to connect Cincinnati and BR. Well, I mean, if the two are going to keep doing this, then of course we're going to keep doing this. I mean, it is a little uncanny. I'll get to the to the Bengals in just a second. But let's start with, uh, with Mike Denbrock. Um, you know, there's a lot of people maybe around here whose first maybe awareness of Mike Denbrock was watching Cincinnati against Alabama on Friday, and they go, man, this guy put two field goals against Alabama? So give us some perspective here, man, on on who Mike Denbrock is. Well, this is a guy that's been you know, around Brian Kelly for a long time and has worked for him at, at Notre Dame, and obviously before that as well. He, he develops talent and recruits really well. I think the one thing that if you watch that game and, you know, LSU and Cincinnati fans probably were on the same boat going, you know, why are we being so conservative and a little vanilla in the biggest game that you could ever possibly be in? So, uh, you know, he he runs an up-tempo, fast, spread offense. Um, You know, when you have a good quarterback like Desmond Ritter, you can throw it around and, and, and have some fun with it. And they had Jerome Ford, the Alabama transfer at running back, and they ran it a lot this year and were very successful I mean, he was able to take an offense that when he got here and Coach Pickle and him got here was one of the worst in the country, the top 10 all year long. But that game against Alabama, certainly, I mean, you got to give Alabama credit there. It, you know, it's a different animal when you're playing Alabama when you're Cincinnati. But, you know, they went up to Notre Dame and punched Notre Dame right in the mouth and, and beat them, put up 17 points in the first half, and they dominated Notre Dame for most of that game. So, you know, he, he had a lot a lot of good things happen on offense, but that playoff appearance was uh, not one of his brighter play calling days, I don't think. Well, it was obviously a tall task. And we, I mean, we all we all understand that. Um, but as you mentioned, throughout the duration of the season, they were a top 10 team offensively in the country. What is Mike Denbrock's forte offensively? I think uh, just letting players play and getting – and, you know, obviously at LSU, you're going to get a different type of talent than you're getting – at Cincinnati, but you ask any player on that UC team, and they love Coach Denbrock, and they help develop him, and really are able to get the best out of his players. And it's, you know, I've been around him for a few years now, and it's just been, you know, he's a guy that doesn't, I don't think, really listens to the outside noise like most coaches do, because he has got some flack from from fans about, you know, the offense stalling or maybe being too run heavy at some times, but. You know, when he needs his guys to play, he really is able to put them in good spots. And I, I think LSU is going to like what he does. It's just a matter of him, you know, him and Brian reconnecting and, and getting this offense going again. You know, it's not going to – I don't think it's going to look like – I don't think anything will ever look like Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase when they were back there uh, a couple of years ago winning the national title. But I think he has the potential to do something special with those type of athletes and, and you know, the resources that LSU has. Brandon, we talked about Desmond Ritter, and I think a lot of people got to – become familiar with him throughout the course of the season. What about other quarterbacks that Mike Denbrock has worked with? Is there a style maybe that he prefers? Ooh, um, I don't know if there's an exact style that he prefers. I know he probably just like anyone, he, he wants a winner and a guy that's going to work hard. And he, he's developed guys because Des has pretty much been his guy since day one. They had a senior, Hayden Moore, his first year here. Um, that did okay, but then Des really stepped up and he was committed to him. And you could see once he got comfortable, once they got comfortable together, they started throwing more downfield, you know, running more up tempo stuff. And that's the one thing that's most noticeable about Cincinnati's offense, I'd say. And that was the key really against Alabama that didn't happen, except for the first drive of the first half and first drive of the second half was once they got one first down and got running tempo they were able to just keep rolling. And that's what they did all year. They did it at Notre Dame. They did it in a big game against Houston. And that's why they were able to put up, you know, 35, 40 points a game. And against Bama, they weren't able to do that besides two drives. So I think really just getting the ball and getting that first first down and kind of, um, you know, pushing the ball, that, that's something that he's really good at is, is, is getting these guys to buy into what he's what his game plan is. And once you start executing, they can 
roll and go right down the field. We've uh, we saw that LSU's also hired Joe Sloan as the quarterbacks coach. I'm going to assume that Mike Denbrock isn't the guy that works specifically with the quarterbacks. Maybe Mike worked with the tight ends at LSU. We'll see how it all plays out. Do you know if there's like a position group that that he what position group he worked with there in Cincinnati? Yeah, tight end. I okay. think that was what what he worked with. The the quarterbacks coach at Cincinnati was Gino Gadulli. He was you know before Dez was probably the, the best quarterback in Cincinnati program history, and he's a, a candidate to be the offensive coordinator now, probably the likely choice now that Denbrock's on. But, yeah, he works with the tight ends, and then Gino was kind of the guy who was overseeing the quarterback. But, you know, Mike's calling the plays and ran the show and obviously had a lot of success here at Cincinnati. Look, I mean, you know you know LSU and you know Baton Rouge and you know the SEC having been down here and what it's like, the recruiting battles you're in. How, how is Mike Denbrock as, as a recruiter? How do you think he fits in some of those battles? Oh yeah, I mean he's gonna. He wants to be. He wants to be front and center. I mean he wants to. Uh, he wants to get the best and develop them. That's one of the key things. Is just you know he's on. He's on just like every other coach is. He's active on social media. He's trying to get get guys that that can fit his system and win. And you know it's not a. I, I think maybe some people might worry. You know he's not the not to compare. Just it's, it's for me the easy comparison. You know Marcus. Freeman was kind of the younger guy, aggressive guy. Um, Denbrock's a little older, but he's still going to come at you and, and want to bring the best kids in. I think probably him and Brian having that familiarity and the way they recruit together is going to be is going to be really successful at LSU. Hey, Brandon, what was the reaction there in Cincinnati to Mike Denbrock leaving here on the, the heels of, of I, I, I guess, would have to be considered the, the greatest season in school history? Yeah, I think it was mixed. Um, I, I think there was a lot of, excitement for for what he was able to do with with Dez and this offense this year and getting them to the college football playoffs and they did a lot of good things on offense but if you if you ask the casual fan I think some were interested to see what another coordinator might look like when you see some of the games where you get conservative or run heavy right out of the gate in the second half so I think it was a little bit of a mixed bag I think a lot of fans were thankful for everything he did here in Cincinnati. He had a you know a, a big impact on on recruiting and get, turning this offense around the past four to five years. But you know I think fans are in Cincinnati are excited to see what what's to come next with the offense. Uh, Brandon Seho, WLWT Television, there in Cincinnati. He's on Twitter at Brandon Seho. We just keep running him down, man. As uh, as Baton Rouge <laughs> and Cincinnati just keep colliding. Hey. Um, were you were you getting the gat at Paul Brown Stadium on <laughs> on uh on Sunday or were you were you abstaining? I I did not get the gat. I don't ha- I have some rhythm. I don't think I uh I don't have that one perfected yet or the gritty. Uh. So I I know how to smoke a cigar. I can do that really well. Yes, I can do that too. So, yeah. So uh so yeah, no, it was fun, man. It was uh God, those two connecting, it is crazy to watch. I mean, the last two games alone, Burrow almost has 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns, no picks, and then Jamar is just killing it. I mean, it is it is wild to watch what they're doing up here. Um, if you need uh, a contact, let me know. Lil Elt, you know, get the Gat uh, artist, been in studio yeah, here in before. Town, apparently. Um, what's that? He's in town up there? Apparently he's staying with Jamar this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I actually, um, his manager uh, called me today because they're. I mean, obviously they rode the wave of 2019 LSU, and they're like, eh, "We're gonna do it again here in Cincinnati in 2021." Maybe so. So hey, look, if you need Elt, I got a contact. You just let me know. I'll hook you up. All right, I appreciate it, man. That's, that's, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> uh, Brandon Seho on Twitter, at Brandon Seho. Y'all go give him a follow. Hey, man, always appreciate it. Hope you're well. Happy New Year, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for everything. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.